بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ صلی اللہ محمد و علیہ محمد السلام علیکم اینڈ ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم ٹو انادر ایپیسوڈ آف مائی شو اویئرنیس وتھ فہاد اینڈ ٹوڈے ٹاپک از اباؤٹ کیریئرس ان کینیڈین آرم فورسز اینڈ آئی ہیو اے ویری اسپیشل گیسٹ وتھ می ہو ہیو سرو ان دا کینیڈین آرم فورسز اینڈ آئی ایم آنر دیٹ ہی از ہیئر ود اس ٹوڈے لیٹ می انٹروڈیوس یو ٹو اویس احمد اویس ہاؤ آر یو ٹوڈے السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈوئنگ گریٹ ہاؤ یور سیلف گڈ گڈ ہاؤ اباؤٹ یو گڈ گڈ یو نو ایٹ دا ویدر از انٹرسٹنگ بٹ یا کین کمپلین الحمد للہ ماشاء اللہ تھینکس دیٹ از گڈ ٹو ہیئر فرام یو وی بفور وی اسٹارٹ اویس لیٹس ٹیل اباؤٹ یور سیلف اینڈ وٹ ڈو یو ڈو ان دا کین ان آرم فورسز اینڈ وٹ ڈو یو ڈو ٹوڈے بیسکلی شیور سو وین آئی جوائن دا ملٹری آئی جوائن ویز ایز وٹس کال ان آرمڈ کرو مین اوکے وٹ دس مینس از دیٹ یو ٹیپکلی ڈیل ود لارج ویکلس Uh, where you then have to specialize between going into tanks mm -hmm. or uh, reconnaissance. Okay. So in my case, I ended up going into reconnaissance. Okay. And I, the vehicles I specialized on was called the Coyote uh, and also the Lab 3. Uh, throughout my career, I had the opportunity to first start off as a driver that eventually promoted to gunner and ultimately promoted Whoa. to the vehicle commander. Yeah. Nice. Uh, currently, uh, yeah. as I had transitioned out of the King Armed Forces, I now work in security for a large financial institution. Wow, that's good to hear. Mashallah. Thank you. Um, now, like, if we go into detail about, like, what did inspire you to go into the Canadian Armed Forces? So I have an interesting story. Yeah. Uh, my father actually joined the Canadian Army, and I grew up oh. in a very small military town called Petawawa. It's about an hour and a half. From uh, uh, Toronto? Uh, no, it's, it's about an hour and a half from Ottawa. Oh. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a military base, it's a military uh, base. Canadian Army base specifically. Oh, because your father was already working in the Army, so you guys were staying there. Correct, so. yeah. Nice. So what happened was, is, uh, my whole life, it, it had been between being posted uh, from Petawawa to Ottawa, and then Ottawa by Petawawa and back, uh, throughout my entire upbringing, in fact, around nice. until middle of high school. Uh, where I was then moved back to Ottawa and grew up there. So mm -hmm. by way of me growing up on mm -hmm. you know, military bases, if you will, uh, of that course, it inspired you, right? Exactly, yeah, that became the influence to follow my father's footsteps. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Very good. Uh, the one thing that comes to my mind is I recently, there was a Remembrance Day, right? So what does Remembrance Day uh, means to you as a veteran? And how do you observe it every year? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Uh, so to me, Remembrance Day is you know, definitely a day of reflection for myself. Okay. Now, er, to know every military veteran, both serving and or former mm. serving, uh, each person you know, observes Remembrance Day differently. Uh, right. And it all comes down to personal experiences. So in my particular case, uh, having been to the war in Afghanistan twice. Oh, you went uh, there twice? I did, yes. Wow. So one, 2007, and then again, 2009 slash 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, with what I had seen, what uh, the experiences I'd been through, the hardships and whatnot, Uh, I, I observe it more of a, from a quiet kind of point of view. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll usually go with my wife, go to a local cenotaph. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, I currently reside in Milton. Mm -hmm. uh, so every November 11th, uh, we go to the local cenotaph. And nice. I, I, I don't necessarily participate in the, yeah. the actual ceremony itself, but I go there as an observer. observer. And nice. uh, pay my respects to the fallen. But of course, it will have a good effect on especially your kids. You know, you go... and remember those you know hardship that you have done for our country right? yeah yeah you know it, that's actually a great point you brought up so uh i, I have two children uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're fairly young today however uh, i do make it a personal mission of mine uh, to always keep them aware of why we take a moment to remember mm -hmm. and what does a day actually mean and, and mm -hmm. not in terms of what you see on television and watching a whole parade unfold mm -hmm. but rather you as an individual you know why is it you know dad in this case or, or baba why am i the one going yeah and wearing my medals and attending you know ceremonies and whatnot so uh it's something i really believe though as you know whether it's you know desi or, or not uh as a canadian you know yep. it, it, it is a day to definitely recognize but also take the time to pay that respect to, to all of those that have you know, not just fallen but also those have been wounded as well and that's why uh, i'm doing this show because i want to inspire our young kids So they come into this and, and, and serve our country, basically, beloved country, right? So, uh, so to extend our conversation, for example, uh, if somebody has to go into this field, what subject do you think you have to be good at to get selected? And how long was your training, basically? 
Okay, so uh, I guess end to end, you know, when it comes to your high school, uh, right, the, your basic arithmetic, so mathematics courses or English courses, all things equal, right? Mm -hmm. If you do well in school, uh, okay. then what happens is when you have Especially to... Especially 11th and 12th grade we're talking about? Correct, yeah, yeah. Okay. because in the end of the day, you have to write an aptitude test to yeah. get inside the Canadian Armed Forces. And uh, from my memory or recollection, it was English and math. Uh, but again, basics, right? All high school level mathematics. Mm -hmm. And based off of your test score, that's what you were used to merit if you qualify to mm -hmm. enter that. Is there a minimum requirement for that, those test scores? Uh, so they, they... Like, I mean, sorry, in the maths. Yeah, and, and yeah. Special subject. They, I can't remember the exact... Uh, so from memory serves me correct, I can't remember the exact number of uh, arithmetic and English based questions. But mm -hmm. what had happened was that whenever you wrote the... Uh, mm -hmm. the they called it the... the CFAT, Canadian Armed Forces Aptitude Test. Mm. And whenever you write the CFAT, uh, I don't know how it was calculated, but ultimately you needed a very specific minimum score to qualify for the mm. for that type of, uh, that role you wanted to apply for in the military. So, so for example, if yeah. you want to go into Armored Corps, yeah. which is what I was, so the tanks, the armored vehicles, this type of stuff, uh, there was a certain threshold you had to, you, you had to score above that threshold to qualify. Because it requires some sort of engineering stuff, knowledge, or... To, to run those armored vehicle or? Uh, you know what, that's a good question. So yeah. the way it works is that in the Canadian Armed Forces, you have yeah. multiple different trades or occupations you can pick. Mm -hmm. So we actually do have engineers. Uh, for example, you have a, the combat engineer, but then you have actual you know, like electrician, uh, sorry, electronics engineers, uh, electrical engineers, things of that mm -hmm. sort. And then all things equal, you of course have to score uh, probably uh, what I would assume to be a higher uh, 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 result on your aptitude mm -hmm. test. And based off of that paired with perhaps uh, mm -hmm. uh, any specific educational background that you have, such as a diploma, a degree, mm -hmm. that's what would be used to uh, in your application for that position. So in mm -hmm. other words, every position has a very different uh, requirement, whether it be educational based mm -hmm. or also what you score in your aptitude test. Mm -hmm. So did they came to your school and then that's how you applied or... or like the Canadian Armed Forces folks, they came to your school? Yeah, so when it comes to the application, yeah. uh, so in my case, it was a little different because I grew up in a military family. Okay. Uh, for me, it was simply put, you know, walking inside of a recruitment center, right? And then talking with one of the sergeants okay. that was on the floor at the time and, and, and asking him about the questions. about How that. was that experience to you? <laughs> yeah, it was, well, the good news is for me, there was no intimidation factor because okay. I... You, know, again, you already know the environment. Exactly, yeah. So I grew up on a military base. It yeah. was very normalized for myself. But uh, let's say, for, for example, for the viewers, here if you yeah. want to go and apply for a role in the camp forces you know don't be intimidated you know by all means the recruiters are phenomenal you know women and men that work there and and their jobs really are to be that you know textbook of knowledge to share with you so be candid be transparent in your questions mm -hmm. right and That's good whatever advice. career interest because there's multiple different careers and mm -hmm. then you have the three elements being mm -hmm. Air Force, Army, Navy. So uh, on top of what you may be interested in, you could also perhaps mm -hmm. uh, ask specifically for one of those three elements. So mm -hmm. whichever one would interest you, such as if you like the water, go Navy, right? Or if mm -hmm. you want to work in an Air Force base, there's, there's that So they, they look at your, like they ask you like certain questions so they can find out the requirement. Okay, based on that, that questionnaire, uh, you know, like assessment kind of a kind of a thing, right? So was yeah. So when you go and talk yeah. in a recruitment center, uh, yeah. you, have to, you have to think of it as kind of an, an informational meeting, right? Yeah. So the recruiters' jobs are there to answer anything and everything you'd want to ask. So my greatest advice for the viewers is that mm. before you, uh, well, mind you, now in the era of COVID, you will have to first communicate with uh, probably via email or telephone call mm -hmm. with the recruitment center to establish an appointment. Once you have your appointment set up. My advice would be is prepare your questions, right? Think thoroughly about what is it that you find is your pros and cons. And then from that list, you can develop your questions to bring forth when you have a discussion with a recruiter. Because it's based off of those questions mm -hmm. that they can then answer better, but also creates a good dialogue of understanding. Right. No, that's, that's very good. The another thing that came into my mind about the religion factor. So... Did the Canadian Armed Forces cater to your religious requirement and needs and was there a halal option available basically? So that's one of the greatest things about the Canadian Armed Forces, yeah. right? They are a very diverse organization in fact. And when I was there, excuse me, when I was there, um, 
you know, whenever I, for example, whenever there be a meal hour, so let's just say lunchtime, for example, yeah. uh, if there was a, you know, a, a pork product that was served, the good news is that there's always an alternative, always. Mm, always. So you, whether you didn't want to eat the meat. If you're a vegetarian, the, then you have the Exactly. So whatever. they, they had pasta for sides and what about, all kinds of stuff. What about, they have mosque over there? You no, so uh, the, on, on military camp yeah. forces basis, traditionally speaking, due to you know uh, due, uh, kind of history, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, there are churches of mm -hmm. very specific uh, practices. Like for example, you have, may have a Protestant, or mm -hmm. I'm not, don't quote me on this, I can't remember, but maybe a, a Roman Catholic as well. However, there is no mosque specifically. But you can pray and all those things. Uh, right? well, well, the thing, uh, if you want to pray, by all means, you could definitely, definitely. Uh, court, you know, discuss that with your manager. Like, mm -hmm. like just like now in the private sector, right? Right. right. Uh, but I do want to note one thing. So mm -hmm. in the military, they don't just have you know, what they call the they call the specific trade a padre. So uh, kind of a uh, like a priest, for example. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is in the Canaan Armed Forces, they always had imams oh, and nice. they had rabbis as well. And I did want to highlight that because you know the, there's. From a religious point of view, if you want to enter the Karim forces as a career, mm -hmm. the good news is, and I really, and I'll you know, reiterate that, there is that degree of diversity and understanding, nice. and they completely understand that not everyone that comes from one faith, but rather an array of different faiths. That's good. That's good. Uh, so, suppose if somebody wants to prepare for an interview, right? What did you do? Uh, I just want to know from you because what did you do to prepare for your for your interview so my viewers can get lot of good clues and help basically from you. So you know what, uh, so what's interesting in that question is, and for the viewers as well, yeah. when I had to prepare for the interview, uh, and interestingly enough, today I'm always contacted on, uh, actually LinkedIn, believe it or not, by many different career professionals who would ask me, you know, what, hey, if I join the Canadian Armed Forces today, can I, am I gonna be away from my family for an extended period of time? So when I was young at that time, uh, mm -hmm. I believe it was 18, 19 years old. Uh, mind you, I didn't have a family, no. However, uh, my questions of curiosity were always around, what is the deployment gonna be like? For example, when I was going in 2004 to join the Armed Forces, you know, the, uh, the, the, the wartime in Afghanistan you know, it began, right? The Americans had entered Afghanistan, Canada had begun or was beginning its contingency or its presence as well. Uh, and my thought process was, all right, if I join the Canadian Army today, you know, am I going to be expected to be deployed? But more importantly, what's the training going to be like? So there's a lot of those questions I had asked because, uh, you know, going back to one of your former questions, right? Yeah. Don't go in there, uh, let me rephrase this. You want to go in there prepared. You want to think about anything and everything you'd want to ask a recruiter, especially now, you know, in the time of COVID specifically because your time is limited, right? Yep. If, if anything, you may get max 60 minutes with the recruiter and that, that's your opportunity You know, take, take full advantage of, of, again, the textbook of knowledge that they have and you can ask those questions. Nice. That's good for the viewers. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, then there's one thing that comes to my mind because uh, I always think about that like if suppose if you join the Canadian Armed Forces what about your degree can you continue your degree and is there any program that lets you continue your studies being military doing military training yeah so you know what I'll actually I'll take that question and, and look at it holistically so when you join the Armed Forces you actually have to choose between two different, two different streams the first stream is what you call the non-commissioned member all things equal, what that really means at the end of the day is you don't have a university degree. The second stream is called officer. So a phrase you may have heard many times in those military movies. Uh, and when it comes to an officer, the requirement or the key requirement is always a degree. Now what that degree is, is of course a, a variable because it always depends on the type of occupation you're going into. But in my specific case, I applied for what's called a non-commissioned member. So this was no university degree. So my experience was I graduated high school literally on a Friday, and then a week later on a Monday, I was already in Saint-Jean, Quebec, uh, as part of the basic training recruit school. And what I needed was, because I didn't have a degree at that time, mm -hmm. uh, my training was very specific around finishing my basic qualification, which I mm -hmm. believe was around three and a half months at the time. Then I had to go to Gagetown, New Brunswick, complete my uh, basic soldier qualification, where you learned all the soldier-related mm -hmm. skills, uh, you know, living in the woods, that kind of ordeal. And then following that was the last phase of my training, and that was occupation-specific. So being qualified to be a driver on a coyote, which is an armored vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going as an officer, the, the good news, though, is that there's, that's also a bit of a variable in a way, 
because if you already have a degree, then your application changes a little bit. In other words, the way that will work is when you talk with your recruiter, and this is actually what I recommend the audience as well, if you already mm -hmm. have a degree, you need to highlight that to the recruiter whenever you book an appointment because that can then perhaps open some doors uh, involving you know, the, the, the length or the time it would take from your application process. The other flip side of the coin is you're currently working on a degree or you've recently been accepted into a university right, or an educational right. institution. And that could be another avenue of approach where you, the military perhaps could maybe even pay for that. Uh, or, or who knows, they can maybe even put you inside of what's called the Royal Military College, aka RMC, which is located in Kingston, Ontario. Mm. So that could be an avenue. Uh, so you can, you can continue your education there, regular yeah, degree, exactly. plus you so, get a training too. Uh, precisely. So you get free training, free qualification. You know, you're actually getting mm -hmm. it. The good news is, uh, you know, for all the, for all the, uh, the women and men watching this right now, the military is not a job. It is a career. career. And that's the biggest you know, distinguishing factor I, I want to highlight today because, mm -hmm. you know, the, unfortunately, the perceptions are always <laughs> what you see in the media, right? But I want to eliminate that. And I actually want to tell you firsthand that the military is a career and it is what you make of it whether you want to climb the, the ladder all the way to the top box, or if you decide that at some point you want to release and use those transferable skills. Uh, one thing I'll actually add as well is that while I was in the military, so again, as a non-commissioned member, I actually did take time out of my, you know, my evenings, my weekends, and I studied part-time at Athabasca University mm -hmm. uh, and also took a course or two at the World Military College, which was so all done through what, distance what learning. What did you do as, as like it was a minor kind of a thing? Precisely. So these were all elective-based courses okay. uh, because the thing, I'm, and I'm, for me specifically, yep. I didn't know what degree I wanted to pursue, but I knew if I took some elective courses, in the end of the day, Day, right as all universities are. It always have right in the end. Exactly, you can transfer them a different degree or different focuses. So that's what I had done, and mm -hmm. then it's when I got out of the military that I eventually went back to school full time to finish my Bachelor of Commerce. Oh, did the Bachelor earn from where? So when I got out of the military in 2016, yeah. I went back to Ryerson University, mm -hmm. uh, completed my Bachelor of Commerce, mm -hmm. and then it was literally my last semester of school where I had to experience this thing called networking mm -hmm. because I realized very quickly that when you leave the service, you tend to not have that many contacts yeah. in the private sector. So it was one so of those- So you started your network and all those things too? Uh, exactly. So I started networking and when one door led to another, where I eventually landed my first job at that time mm -hmm. at the Bank of Montreal. So basically there is no age requirement, I would say, based on your conversation. So, you know, or is, like there, there is there, yeah. like there, there's a range, right? Like, so if you're 18 years old, yeah. you can, you can sign the military uh, without a parental or guardian permission. Uh, yeah. There's a specific form for that as and, well. And obviously. to what, like what age range do you think it's, it's, it's good. They can go in the Yeah. Military. So you know what? Uh, so what I tell our viewers, uh, you know, it's, it's this, uh, when you're in your last grade of high school, so grade 12, yeah. it's in that point you want to truly look at yourself self-reflect in a sense of, all right, do I have any passions at the university level? If you don't, and that's fine if you don't, if you don't, and perhaps you have you know, a, a trade specific, you know, uh, focus that you're interested in, such as, I don't know, plumbing, refrigerator technicians, uh, mechanic, you know, things of that sort, then you should definitely explore the military because they will actually train you on that stuff for free as a part of joining the Cameron forces. You get the qualification, and the, but more importantly, you actually get the hands-on experience that it's applicable, not just in the military, but also when you get out. But now again, the other flip side of the coin is, let's say you are interested in university, right? There's mm -hmm. a course, uh, I'll make it up, I don't know, uh, let's say English literature or history, for example. You know, you can take these degrees uh, and all things equal, you know, you, you study very hard, you get the best grades possible. But let's say during that time, you realize, you know what, I want to join the infantry in the Canadian mm -hmm. Army, or I want to be, you know, A, B, C, occupation and military, whether right. it be an officer or not, the great news is you can always at any point in time mm -hmm. talk with the recruiter about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guys, this is a very interesting conversation going on. So I'm going to take a quick break. So stay tuned. I will be back. With a portfolio of success with Empire Business Center, a marvel unparalleled. Indus Empire Mall and Residency, showcasing your elite stature with grandeur. Step in your private kingdom, stylish drawing rooms. Live in the lounge of nobility, luxurious bedrooms, covered car parking, modern gym. Only one minute drive from the main gate, Indus Empire.
2020 का लाजवाब ऑफर जहां हम 0% परसेंट फाइनेंसिंग पर आपकी मन पसंद कार दे रहे हैं फ्री विंटर टायर्स और साथ ही हम मुफ्त ऑयल चेंज भी दे रहे हैं वो भी उम्र भर के लिए अभी आए और इस लाजवाब ऑफर का लुत्फ ले जल्दी करें आपका खुश हमारे आउटलेट में जो कि 60 क्विंट्स प्ले ड्राइव एट इंटरसेक्शन क्लोज टू हाईवे 27 एंड रेजिडेल ऑपोजिट टू वुड बैंड रेस ट्रैक जल्द से जल्द इस ऑफर का लुत्फ लें आज ही कॉल करें सुनील अग्रवाल को 647-703-0218 हाय गाइस वेलकम बैक सो वी आर हियर सो वी हैव विद आवर गेस्ट ओवेस एंड वी गोना स्टार्ट वेयर वी लेफ्ट ऑफ so always we were talking about the age requirement and you were telling us about uh, the age stuff yeah so please so, go ahead so when it comes to your age right uh, you ask me an interesting question you ask you know, what's the best age to yeah. join uh, in in my in my opinion you know based off my life experience i'd have to say the best age is when you believe you're ready mm-hmm. because it's it's a question of are you ready to enter a career at a young age mm-hmm. you know all things equal what is the pattern of life today well mm-hmm. that's simple we all go to school we 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 graduate elementary then on to high school graduate high school but then we tend to go to post secondary mm-hmm. but in this case the military is that one niche organization where it will actually take in uh, people at age of 18 as an example and you can go ahead at an eight, as an 18 year old mm-hmm. get a full time salary work at a full time career so not a job but an actual career and get trained for free so my my great advice to the viewers is simple if you're interested in joining the Canadian Armed Forces then i would say reflect about what your passions are and uh, specifically around university and if that does interest you then still have a conversation with the Canadian Armed Forces recruitment center because there's always a chance that you never know they could take you in pay for your school which by the way that does happen uh, it does i know many people that have done that successfully mm-hmm. you've gone to school full time in the summers you then go to a specific military unit as a part of your militaryized training mm-hmm. and by the time you graduate university 4 years later okay. you've or you're you're collecting a paycheck right you're you're getting a free education and now you're getting uh you're 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 a mile ahead of the rest of the people at your same age group mm-hmm. in terms of getting life experience nice So um those are very good stuff I think it will definitely help my viewers. Uh what happens like when you finish your basic military training like wh- what do you do after that? Yeah so in my particular case what happened was is when I finished what we called BMQ basic mm-hmm. military qualification okay. and that was in Saint-Jean Quebec. Uh we then had to take a bus literally from there all the way to Gagetown New Brunswick. Okay. Uh and when I was in New Brunswick I was there as a part of what's called SQ. So at the time SQ stood for soldier qualification. Okay. It was it didn't matter what element you were, Air Force, Navy, Army, everybody had to then attend this course mm-hmm. which uh, I believe was about 3 months. Remember serves me correct. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of that course was to get qualified to get trained up on how to use small arms weapons mm-hmm. because it, again it comes back to the term of soldier qualification so we taught you the basics but now it's time to sharpen those uh, those skills, skills. Yeah. precisely so yeah. it, it all involved you know, another I call it uh, glorified camping right you're getting paid to go camping uh, but they'll teach you basic survival skills uh, mm-hmm. small arms weapon skills uh, but more importantly they actually give you that raw exposure to management and leadership Nice, so something nice. you actually don't get at, at a young age you would mm. never get that in working at uh, which is very important job. in your field exactly because it develops that ability of <laughs> how do you communicate effectively yeah. when you're now working amongst an entire team of 30 people yes they're your peers but at the end of the day the military is teaching you how to talk on a radio using their own lingo and then mm. you have to communicate messages which you know usually a, a staff member will teach you they walk you through it but it, overall end to end uh you know when you're they done, teach you encryption stuff uh in, in a way so what happens is they teach you alpha numeric so yeah. like alpha bravo charlie delta yeah. the, the, you may have seen these terms yes, in the movies yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll teach you that stuff right because you have to actually learn it yeah. uh you also have to learn what's called afv so uh aerial uh fighting vehicle uh, it's been a while apologies but, I don't know. but at the end of the day it's essentially it's like armored vehicles and then aircraft and mm. you have to understand different variants of them in other words so after that training uh, the 3 months stuff 
what do you, what do you guys do? Like they will appoint you somewhere, or what? What yeah, happens so, after that? So once you're done your soldier qualification, yeah. you then go <laughs> off to what I'll say, lack of a better term, your trade school mm. or your occupation uh, school. Yeah. So my specific example, it was the Armored Corps, mm. right? So in Gage Town, New Brunswick that was already the home of the Armored Corps in terms of where you went for your training. Mm. So literally, I'd go from one building on one side of the road, and I kid you <laughs> not, packed up my, my, my bags and, and you have to move walk to across building. the street. Exactly. It was literally a hopscotch across the street where, while other people had to go on a bus or take a flight somewhere else inside the province. But point being was you went to now your, your occupational school. And it, uh, in my case, I had to wait a little bit for our course to begin. So a couple months. How was ago. your first experience uh, like when you join your actual work, like a, like a month experience, uh, if you want to share. Yeah, so you know, it was very interesting. Because those first yeah. days are, are something, you know, you always remember. Yeah, so what's interesting is, uh, and for the viewers here, for the viewers here uh, one of the, I, I smile and I laugh now when I think about it, but one of the most incredibly simplistic skills, which involves folding your bed, polishing your boots and having a neatly <laughs> and an organized set of your personal or belongings at your, you know, your cubicle, if you will, where you sleep. Uh, that was interesting. And w you know, throughout my entire training, when I was a new recruit, mm -hmm. uh, you constantly had morning inspections. And I'll never forget that, where the master corporal or the sergeant will come inside the room, everybody stands you know, still at attention, and you know, that uh, he or she, you know, the instructor, will come inside the room and inspect They'll inspect your drill dress and deportment, meaning, you know, is your uniform on correctly? Is, is your headdress on correctly? Is everything polished? Your boots are polished? Right. Are you clean? Is everything or, or neat and organized? So organized, I mean. Precisely. Yeah. And, and believe it or not, you know, one thing I want to highlight is I laugh and smile today because where I'm at today in my life, my professional life, believe it or not, learning Those to fold my sheets, exactly, learning to fold my sheets, learning to, uh, to iron my shirts, polish your boots, <laughs> these basic, simple things we're all part of a greater skill set, and that's self-discipline. And it's that self-discipline that I carry forward to even in my own personal life as well. So what was your daily schedule like? Okay, those are very good things you have told us. What's your daily schedule look like? What do you do like when you wake up and then... Yeah, so every morning you wake up, uh, my goodness, I think it was around 5.45, uh, 6 a.m. Oh no, probably earlier than Also seven, on the weekends? Six. No, weekends was different. Weekends, <laughs> if you were, so actually funny story, if, you were, if your course performed very mm -hmm. well, nobody got in trouble, everyone did their job, and there was no punishment to be had, then everybody had a kind of a freebie pass on the weekend. So uh, usually came with restrictions, right? Mm -hmm. Which is you had to report back to base at X hour in the night, but you were allowed to essentially leave your barrack. Mm -hmm. uh, but day to day, you know, when it came to what you were taught, what you were learning, mm -hmm. that was interesting. Every day was different, right? So we started the morning, you did your physical fitness, whether it be running, push-ups, sit-ups, in the gym or out outdoors. You came back, you quickly showered, you got dressed uniform, you did your inspection. So your, your, uh, the sergeant, the master corporal, the staff member they will, will come inspect. in, they'll inspect your room, and usually in a room either with four people, <coughs> sometimes eight, it, it all depends, right, how big your course is. Uh, you conclude your inspection, and then you, they give them instructions saying, all right, you know, uh, for example, all right, troops, you know, grab your you know, A, B, C equipment, bring it with you, we're gonna go to the, uh, the classroom now to learn your first lecture about you know, the armored armored vehicle, you know, ABC. So in my mm -hmm. case, the, the Coyote, which mm -hmm. was, was the name of it. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk about the Coyote and we're gonna teach you first, you know, how, ultimately how to drive it. We're gonna teach you all the parts, the components. Mm -hmm. You have to write your exams. You know, they, oh, they give nice. you, yeah, there's actual written exams. So are you retaining your knowledge? Are you studying in the evenings? Or, you know, because, and by the way, the way the evenings are set up when you're in the military in the evenings is that, uh, there really isn't that free time, quote unquote. There's always something to do, right? There's always something to keep clean. you busy. Precisely. And they use a term called lights out. And lights out always meant by 11 p.m. or 2300 hours, mm -hmm. using military timing, uh, all the lights went off. And that was the, the wow. that was time for you, you know, to go See, to bed. Wow. There's a question that comes into my mind. Is there a strong representation of the protected status group in the Canadian Armed Forces while you serve? Like, uh, for example, women, visible minorities? Yeah, you know what? Uh, so in, in, in these times specifically involving BIPOC you know, uh, members, uh, what I would probably say is when I first joined, uh, I was maybe one of 75 to 100 
in terms of being a visible minority, especially one of you know Middle Eastern and East Indian descent. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it's and, and by and by no means, you know, to, 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 uh, it's not the military's fault. By no means, it's just at the time of. You know, our communities weren't mm -hmm. really given that type of uh, mm -hmm. progressive or uh, proactive type of recruitment campaigns so mm -hmm. by the military. You know, the military tends to draw and attract many members from rural communities. Uh, but when it comes to large metropolitan urban centers, mm -hmm. and this is also where you have a lot of you know, member of visible minorities and, and women as well, you have to try to change that tactic. So at that time, mm -hmm. we're growing up in Petawawa, it was a no brainer. Guys, I've been told to take a quick break. So, guys, uh, <laughs> of course, viewers, don't go back. Uh, we, we will be back. Stay tuned. Welcome to City Pro Realty. We are 100% Canadian family-owned real estate brokerage. If you are thinking of buying or selling residential or commercial real estate, think of us. Call us. We are one-stop solution provider for your real estate needs. Our passion is real estate. Your success is our priority. Our commission plans to meet your budget. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. A family serving family. To search for sale properties and free reports, visit www.citypro.net. Uh, welcome back, uh, viewers. So we have still our guest over here, Owes. So, Owes, last time I think we start, we left off uh, with I think we were asking about the protected status, and and definitely you have given a very good answer, and I'm pretty sure my viewer has uh, got all, all the things clear out. Um, the next question I have is about, uh, and, and I'm really excited about that, is Afghanistan. Uh, you deployed, I think, twice over there, isn't it? Yes, so I deployed once in 2007, okay. uh, and then again in 2009 slash- how, how did you prepare for those deployments, <laughs> and what did you do over there, basically? I would love to know about it. Yeah, so you know what, as a part of, uh, the, as part of the military's pre-deployment <laughs> training, what happens is, is that in my particular case, you know, my, my unit and I, we all went to Wainwright, Alberta. We did some workup training there, which, which we spent around two to three months. Uh, and you were essentially exposed to different scenarios and how you essentially react in those scenarios. The reason for this was you know, to create that muscle memory and familiarization. So whenever the real thing does happen, you're fully prepared in how to respond, how to react. And in some cases, it develops that kind of proactive skill set too. So nice. you know how to perhaps mitigate an impact of such a scenario if it should ever occur. Oh. Uh, oh. And then based off that training, when we came back home to our home units, so mm. in my case, Petawawa, Ontario, uh, you typically had a few weeks to kind of relax a little bit. Mm. And then that was it. You're on an aircraft flying all the way to uh, to, to Dubai. And then from Dubai, Dubai you, you got off the aircraft on a mili another military another aircraft. Craft, wow. and flew straight into uh, Kandahar, Afghanistan. Wow, that's good to know. Uh, those, uh, that's very good. Uh, uh, what I was another question that I had, and and, and I think uh, it's kind of a. I know a lot of people are thinking about that. Is about the sustainable, uh, like for example, uh, what about the structure of of uh, pay in terms of in military, right? Like, what other benefits are included so so viewers can would know? Okay, if they going to be selected if they're going to be a, a, a military officer how much they're going to be making salary benefits and all those things yeah so you know for, for the women and men watching us right now uh in the military you have what's called the reserve force so that's part-time uh like a couple hours on a weeknight and then you spend one weekend a month on exercise then you have the regular force which is what i was a part of that's full-time uh, a full career in the Canadian armed forces when it came to benefits as a full-time employee or a full-time member, uh, your dental, your medical, and all that was covered for you and your family. Uh, if, if your children needed braces, you know, it was greatly subsidized for, your, for the expense of you know, giving your children braces. When it comes to your retirement, the great news was you spent 25 years, you received a full you know, retirement package. Uh, and mind you, that's a minimum of 25 years. Any year after that, you know, the camp forces would give you a specific formula where they would add on top of what mm -hmm. your pension, your monthly payouts would be 
for your pension whenever you retire. So in other words, the benefits are definitely, definitely, definitely. worth looking into when you want to pursue a That's career. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, the one thing that I want to know, and it's kind of a, when you, you left uh, the military and you are in the security, uh, you're a security professional now, right? So what skill set help you in get to that stage which you are right now? So basically, in terms of which skills you were transferable that you think uh, help you in getting to the stage where you are right now? Yeah, so for the viewers watching, uh, here's what I have to tell you. If I had to say what the top transferable skills were from the Canadian Army into now working in the private sector, uh, I would have to say number one is leadership. Now, whether you were at a rank of leadership or not, be it managing teams and whatnot, uh, in the end of the day, much of your exposure <coughs> or your day-to-day -day workload does involve you know, communicating effectively and working collaboratively with cross-functional units. So maybe not just those that are, you know, for example, not everyone will be armored, but you may work with some members of the Air Force or work with some infantry members or artillery members. And it's by way of that exposure that you develop a very strong skill set in, in leadership. A second skill would definitely be around communication. And I heard that earlier a little bit, talking about communicating across functional teams. Mm -hmm. So it's anyone can open a book and study it and write the exam and pass it. But not everybody has that soft skill that you need, especially today, where it involves like this right now, communication. You know, can yeah. you communicate effectively to another person? Can you see who your audience is yeah. and tailor the messaging you want to do or what you're trying to articulate to what they would receive yeah. it as? So yeah. So these are the top two skills I have to say that are widely applicable to any career outside the camera forces. That's good to know. Uh, guys, we are getting to the end of our program. So I want you to ask if you want to give any message to my community and viewers. Absolutely. So for especially the young folks watching this, you know, uh, I can say unequivocally that the military is one of the best choices I made in my entire life. It made me the person that I am today. It made me successful in my professional endeavors, but it also has developed a strong character that people know me by. And that is a person who has empathetic, who has strong leadership skills, but also a great listener. I know what I'm saying right now doesn't have that much merit in the words. For example, saying something like a great listener, but believe it or not, that means a lot when you're in the military because when you deploy to a war zone, the ability to have sharpened basic skill sets like that or soft skills is what's greatly attributable in your in your life, in your day to day, you know, after you leave the military, or even whether you decide to pursue, you know, a full blown career. So that's that'd be my greatest advice to all of you. I would definitely consider joining the Karen Forces. Thank you, Wes. Uh, viewers, uh, today we're getting to the end of our show. I'm really thankful to Wes again. Uh, and all the valuable information that you have provided for my viewers. And I'm pretty sure it will persuade our young generation to join Canadian Armed Forces. And regarding my program, please feel free to provide me the feedback. My email is awarenesswithfahad at gmail.com. And also, we are, don't forget to subscribe to Awaz Entertainment YouTube channel. And please click on the bell icon so you get all the updates about our program. Inshallah, I'll be back with my new episode soon. Keep watching Awareness with Fahad and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you again. Khudafis.